Welcome, one and all, to Hope Team League, where we're showcasing tomorrow's titans of the North American StarCraft scene. This is Polygon Gaming, where StarCraft 2 lives. Tonight, we are continuing the round-robin stage of this league with our amazing team, Psionic Aftermath and Psystorm Gaming. Before we get started, I'm going to do the coin flip real quick to decide which team gets to send out the first player. Psystorm has checked in first and has called Tails. And Tails it is, which means Psystorm will be able to get to send out their player. Second, uh, Psionic Aftermath will be forced to send their player first. Now giving you over to the loving care of our casters. First off, we have the only Korean participating in Hope Team League. He is Sluggy. And joining him is a caster for Proxy Tempest and Gauntlet. He is Jordan. Thank you, Felipe. How you doing, Sluggy? Doing just great. Excited to be casting this right here with you. Oh yeah, uh, little uh, fun fact, uh, I casted with Sluggy for his first cast ever with StarCraft and it That's actually funny. went, it went really really well considering it was your first time, I was impressed. Yeah, and that was like what, one year ago? Yeah, it's it been over been a long. year. And this is, uh, this is my first time casting with you since then, so I'm happy to see right. that you stuck with it. Looking forward to it. Yep, so we have uh, Psionic Aftermath and Psystorm Gaming. And uh, Definitely. Cystrom Gaming is currently in second place in Hope Team League, and uh, they're playing uh, Sonic Aftermath currently uh, in last place right now. So this would be a good chance for them to put some points on the board, uh, climb up that ladder, if you will. That's right. Um, I've casted both Psionic Aftermath and Cystorm, and I gotta say, their games were quite stunning. We definitely had uh, really good games that were worth checking out, especially that TVT in the first day of the eliminations. So, just looking from those fantastic games, I have a lot to look forward to today. Just seeing those two great teams duke it out. Yeah, definitely. And if you're not familiar with Hope Team League, we'll run down real quick uh, just the teams that we have. Uh, leading the league right now is Risen and All Inspiration. Uh, they're currently showing a map score of 4. Uh, second place, like we said, is Psystorm. Map score of 2. Uh, behind mm -hmm. them is Nocturnal Gamers, the map score of negative two, and then s rounding out to the lineup is Psionic Aftermath with uh, negative four map score. So yeah, definitely a chance for them to put some points on the board here. Uh, we're in the lobby, we're right. just waiting for some of the players to uh, to arrive here so we can see who both play or both teams are going to field first. I'm um, just checking the lobby uh, or the chat to see who is in here right now. For Psyx, I see Sunny and Sushi and Psyche, Psyche with the GM border so i'm sure we'll be seeing him today and then for Psystorm, i see penguin and epic right we're just waiting for these players to go and it should be good so um just the general question what i know you've been casting a lot right so you've got plenty of experience in there what is your particular mashup that you like the most right now uh, to cast i think right. Z, uh, zvt is probably the most exciting yeah. Because it's just non-stop action. And then with uh, the recent meta being Biomine versus Ling Bane, it's a very right. it's a very explosive matchup, both figuratively and literally. So Definitely. The classic matchup to represent StarCraft, I definitely think it's CVT. That classic uh, humans versus aliens theme is definitely there. And mechanically, it's also impressive to watch being these yeah. top players. Yeah, of course, and ZVT has one of the most iconic games of StarCraft ever played, Scarlet versus Bomber mm, uh, on Overgrowth. Are you talking the, about those Bailing Mines? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bailing Mines at the very, very end of the game. Both players were on like, very low unit counts. It's been a long time oh, since man. I saw it. It was one of the first, uh, first uh, professional StarCraft games that I ever watched. Because mm. it was one of those, yeah, hey, show me something to get me into. Popular. Yeah. That was like, what, 2013? Back it's, in Heart of Swarm? Yeah, it's been some time ago. It was back, I think, when Overgrowth was new to the map pool. So. Right. Those were the days. Yeah, Scarlet's still one of my favorite players to this day. Yeah, we still often see Scarlet trying really hard. We saw her in GSL. Uh, she's really great. I wish she just... Um, it's just that these days, so many pro players have so much experience. It's really hard to get in there and get something out of it which is great for the starcraft scene yeah definitely and she's been playing uh she's been playing protoss a lot i don't know if you've checked into her stream and uh, of course whenever oh, she plays pretty good race. 
<laughs> yeah, Protoss is a good race, and she definitely feels that way. Uh, it's interesting to see her uh, play cross server as Protoss versus uh, versus Zerg. Some interesting stuff. If you guys haven't checked it out. <laughs> Okay, so we do have a matchup here, and it is Protoss versus Terran. So Protoss versus Terran. Lately, um, before it was like more like Vikings versus Colossi. That kind of ma dynamic was the most important. But right now, it seems that Liberators are just a threat to Protoss players. And if the Protoss player can just apply some pressure early on with Oracles and Adepts. It seems that uh, the Terran, if they just can hold on, they may have a stronger edge later on with Liberators. But what do you think about that, Jordan? Uh, yeah, Liberators definitely, uh, for the mid to late game, they're the, the bread and butter of the Terran composition. And just, it's to me, I, I play Zerg, so I don't, I don't have a, I don't play TVP as a matchup. But it's right. just so insane to see Protoss players have to figure out how to deal with Liberators, especially after uh, the range upgrade comes out. All right, definitely. That is definitely when the game starts turning um, towards the turn play, uh, favor. But as we get into this game, uh, let's start introducing the players. Yeah, definitely. All right, in the top right, representing Psy Storm Gaming, we have the Red Terran. His name is Epic. Coming down in the bottom left, it's from Psionic Aftermath, Sonic. Yep, so Acolyte, Acolyte has, has that, that free natural, natural base, base in the back, uh, just behind your main. Definitely. Uh, it's The distance between the map is just so insane. Usually, the shorter distance maps, it takes like, what, like 43, 45 seconds? For Acolyte, it is like 53. It just takes an insane amount of time from the forces from the one spawn to get to another. And with the free, almost free, uh, reserved, uh, another base at back, players like to tend to go to a macro-oriented game because you can really um, hold off the early attacks easier than the other maps. Yeah, it definitely the the layout of Acolyte is different from any of the other maps in the pool right now. And like you said, it is a really large map, and it does have that free natural expansion. But it also allows uh, for some very interesting plays that wouldn't be possible on other maps. Uh, for example, a Protoss taking the forward base as their natural and walling off uh, with a larger wall there and denying scouting there. Uh, you would That's just the assume that it secures uh, and forms a better wall. I think so. Yeah, I think you're definitely right on that. So. The first build is the Robo, actually, and that's quite interesting because the most popular build these days is the Stargate uh, Oracle 3 base. And I think that's what I thought Sonny would go for, but it's because, you know, like I said, due to the macro encouraging games, but it seems that it's going for a Robo. Uh, this Reaper has definitely seen what he needs, and even if it dies, it is worth um, checking out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I don't think that... Has Sunny been on the opposite side of the map yet with anything? I haven't seen an Adept go, so he's kind of blind. He did go fast Robo, so he's going to have an Observer heading across it's right now. Better. Right, right. Uh, it seems that Sonny has hit the F2 keys because we saw the Observer go back. Oh, actually, we have a pause here. Yeah. Game paused. Not sure what that is, but I'm sure it won't take long. So yeah, um, Jordan, do you not play other races? Do you just mainly play Zerg? Uh, yeah, I pretty much primarily play Zerg. I play Protoss sometimes when I'm uh, tired right. of Zerg, but it's very, very rare. Uh -huh. I okay. feel like because I'm only, I'm only Diamond in a. I'm only a diamond with Zerg, so I feel like I should... I, I get more out of StarCraft if I just focused on getting that to a higher tier rather than trying to learn the other races alongside Zerg. Right, okay. Game resume. Okay, so we have a game resuming. And from the Terran side, it seems that we have that classic 2-1-1 build, but except uh, the fact that... It's a, actually, no, it's not a 2-1-1 build. It seems like it might be going for a tank push with the tech lab on the factory. Uh, and there it is. It's the tech. Uh, the tech lab is making the tank. 
Now, this is a really interesting build that TY has demonstrated in GSL. I don't know if it was shown in other builds, but it hits a really strong timing. There's no medevac, so the stim will have to be used very sparingly. And oh my goodness, if this Raven gets the Observer, that would be pretty great. Uh, that would just delay the production that the Robo can do. But yeah, uh, if this hits well, then it can hit like a truck, let me tell you. Yeah, it, it kind of looks, based on all the production that's already coming down here for uh, Epic, yeah, it does look like it's going to be some two-base two, two base aggression at least. Uh, right. But Sunny, uh, I like that Sunny's playing this safe uh, for that reason. He's not taking a third base just yet. He's still trying to get everything else under control, getting the uh, uh, the Colossi's out. I do like fast Colossi versus, uh, versus Terran as Protoss. It makes the initial, like, these two-base pushes, it makes them not nearly as scary. Yeah, Colossi definitely, uh, definitely a counter to these Marines, especially without combat upgrade, uh, combat shields or medivacs. But yeah, it is quite interesting to see that they have uh, gone for this super secure two base start and getting a third base at the fifth Ooh, minute. Free widow mine. Okay, uh, so the observer has caught on that the Terran army is moving out. So. Now, the Protoss player should be cutting probe production and be making units. I'm not yeah. sure if this uh, Zealot will do anything because it doesn't really have charge upgrade, but uh, let's see what it can accomplish. There's one Colossi, but I... For life of me, I don't know where it's at. There it is, it's way over there by the third base. Right. Uh, tank is caught out of position, that's bad. If the Marine, if the tank can focus down the Colossi, the Marines will definitely have enough firepower. Right, uh, the charge lots, I mean, they don't really have charge, they're just zealous without legs, so I'm not sure what he was doing that for. He has plenty of resources, I think in this situation the adept would be better, but now with two tanks, the pressure is on. If the tanks could just focus down the Colossi, that would just gun them down immediately. Yeah, for sure. And this is exactly what he's doing, he's gonna inch his way up every time he sees a little a small moment and I think right now that Sunny's just kind of biding his time he's like okay the tanks aren't in range of anything right now they're just out of range of the natural gives him time right. for extended thermal lance to complete in five seconds and that's going to make it way easier for him to be able to uh to hold this push definitely um Sunny holding on to three gateways he's trying to get those cooldowns but now here it comes the charge lot is taking the shots but the tanks really have to go to focus fire to Colossi but it seems that the stim with the medevac is just too much firepower. Yeah, definitely. I don't think he's going to lose the natural. Three big heads is a lot of firepower. Definitely. But now Liberator production is on the way and more bio forces are just like, they're, they're even st stimming down there. I do like the poke though, because it's going to draw aggression from these units and pull them out. Definitely. Um, right. Now he has to be real careful with these engagements. I think it's better if he could just get some adepts out, but at this rate, Colossi isn't really doing much because of all these high tech composition. Yeah, now the, the Liberators are joining the fight. This is some really tough pressure, and Epic's taking a third base behind this. And it looks like Sunny's gonna lose his. I mean, there's nothing here to tank for the big heads. Oh, a disruptor's coming out. I, I don't think there's enough clumped forces here for the Disruptor to really be a valuable choice, though. I totally agree. The Disruptor could maybe get the tank at best, but it doesn't really even kill the tank in one shot. So another Colossi with more Adepts would have oh. been better. Oh, and there goes down the third Nexus. What yeah, the third going down is absolutely huge. And right. I, don't think the, I don't think the push is going to stop there. Some people might back off and try to macro up behind the aggression, but it looks like he's just going to try and keep it on. Okay, now here he gets some Stalkers, but Stalkers are very, um, they're pretty much an expensive unit, and the best way to counter these kind of pushes is that you have to get these tank pushes before the tank's set up. Uh, don't even have to stand for that one. But yeah, uh, even if uh, the Terran player Epic just retreats now, I think it'll be just fine, because he has such an economical edge, um, he has an advantage in almost uh, everything except for one upgrade, so... Yeah, I was, haven't even been checking upgrades, but yeah, Sunny's on 1-1 one, one versus 1-0 uh, for the Terran army, but... The Terran right now is 50 army supply ahead, that is a 
insane lead right now. Right. One of one of the easiest uh, casting hack is to talk about the supply, the and supply. that definitely knows how the game is uh, going on. So yeah, you're right, Jordan. But look at that disruptor. It's it's so sad. It can't even reach the tanks because of the liberators. Yeah. I I gotta admire Sunny though for holding on. But I mean, by this point, he's got to know that Epic has a third base behind this. There's no way that he doesn't. And he's right. boxed into his own base. Like at this point, at the very least, he might have wanted to take a ninja base as far as. Uh, getting a mothership core and, or a, a prism, fearing at least a probe out to go build to a ninja base or something, at least, because you need that income to keep pace. Because right now, Epic knows that he has Sunny contained. There's not going to be a third base. He actually has a unit up here, a Marine, checking for exactly that right now. So, I definitely agree. Um, getting a proxy base, uh, proxy nexus with the war prism is definitely a strategy you can achieve, but. You definitely need to buy time with it, and Terran is doing a better job. He's getting the fourth base almost done, and he's actually getting the Liberator range to really get the pressure on. Oh yeah, there finally the prism goes, and there's going to be some counter harassment. But I think that I think we're past the point. Right. Where that that is really going to be the most viable option. Okay, so charge is done. So these four zealots uh, are much better. Oh, he's not that, going for the counter uh, sorry, could you say that again? He's not going for harass, he's going for the sandwich. Right. So if he could get a good surround, the charge lads will take care of the tanks at the back. And if the liberators and the tanks don't focus fire to Colossi, but here we go. Here comes to the engagement. Arkans do a great job of tanking, and if these stalkers just get the liberators, that would be great. Oh, but there's so many. Oh, that's a disgusting amount of Liberators, and they have Liberator range almost completely done right now. And yep, it is done right now. A valiant effort, but the charge lots weren't enough, and there were just too much bio forces. Yeah, that's going to be the end of game one. Epic takes it. Size Storm is up on the map, up on the scoreboard. Sorry, one to zero. Okay. So that was a pretty interesting game. Uh, for those Terran players out there, if you are having trouble going to the macro late game versus Protoss, uh, especially when it comes to dodging storms, then this build is definitely something you can check out. Tank, Raven, Marine. It's, it's a solid build. Alright, cool. I think we're handing it over to Felipe now. Thank you so much. We are going to be going to a quick commercial break here soon where we will have a messages from our sponsors, uh, which are Crave Beef Jerky is the big one. Be sure to head over to our Macharino page and check out some offers where you can get some amazing free beef jerky with your donations. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.